Welcome back. I know what I said I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the structure and function of ATP synthase, but I think it's actually important to do this video that I'm about to do. And we're not going to do anything with ATP synthase. What we're going to do is we're going to look at sort of, you can sort of consider it a homeostatic imbalance. And we're going to look at how your body has mechanisms to, to fix it, right? Okay. So in my respiratory chain, right, in my respiratory chain, um, so, you know, you got your respiratory chain, right? So here's my electron transport chain up here. I can, you know, you know, for instance, cytochrome oxidase, if you remember the reaction, it's going to take oxygen with four electrons and it's going to do them one at a time and reduce it to two waters, right? That's the mechanism of cytochrome C oxidase. But if you think about it, it's get, oxygen's getting one electron at a time. So it is possible that, um, that the enzyme, well, first of all, the, the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase is supposed to hold on to the oxygen as, as it's being reduced. But once in a while, the enzyme fails to hold on to it and it lets the oxygen go in the middle of the reduction. So what you end up with is oxygen, you end up with oxygen with a radical electron. And the oxygen has a negative charge. And, and if you wanted to draw the Lewis structure of this, I'll do this in red because it's bad, right? It would look like this. So you've got this guy right here. This oxygen has a negative charge. And then you've got this with a radical electron. And the radical electron I'm going to box. And radical electrons, especially on oxygen, are very reactive. They can react with DNA, they can react with proteins, and they basically, whenever they do react, they destroy the function of whatever they react with. So your body has to have a way to get rid of. It has to have a way to get rid of the, the superoxide. And actually, the, the, the first enzyme in this pathway is an enzyme that you may have heard of, maybe not in the context of this, but it's called superoxide dismutase and the molecule I just drew is a superoxide I don't I don't know if I mentioned that this is superoxide and superoxide dismutase is going to form a molecule called hydrogen peroxide and it looks something like this this is hydrogen peroxide and if you if you remember your organic chemistry you if you look at hydrogen peroxide you notice something you've got a peroxide linkage. So it's it, potentially, this could undergo a homolytic bond cleavage. And that's not good because look at what you would normally generate. You would generate a hydroxide radical. And that also too is very reactive. So hydrogen peroxides are bad to have in your body. There are some enzymes that do use them or generate them, but if you do generate it, you have to have a way to get rid of it. And so the way you get rid of it is through an enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. And let me let me draw that here. The enzyme, and I gotta have some room to draw. Let me scroll down. The enzyme, and you'll see why I need this room in a minute. The enzyme is called glutathione. peroxidase. And to understand what this enzyme is doing, we really need to look at glutathione. Okay? We need to look at glutathione. So what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to bind two monomers of glutathione. And essentially what glutathione is, is I'll draw the structure in a minute, but it's essentially a a, a, a redox buffer, meaning that it, it does oxidation reductions and picks up lone electrons that would normally damage the cell, or in this case, the mitochondria, because what we're dealing with now is the mitochondria. So you're going to have two molecules of this guy, and essentially what it's going to be is, and it's going to take me a minute to draw, but essentially glutathione is a tripeptide. It is a tripeptide. But it's a tripeptide that's not synthesized by a ribosome. So it is not synthesized by a ribosome. It's actually synthesized by two enzymes, um, synthesized by gl uh, glutamate cystineal transferase and then glutathione synthase. Okay. 
And here's a monomer. Here is a monomer of glutathione. So notice what it is. It's a trimer starting at the end terminus of glutamate, cysteine, and, and glycine. And so what's going to end up happening is it's going to react and the two monomers are going to oxidize with each other. And what you're going to end up with, what you're going to end up with is this. You're going to end up with, again, it's going to take a minute to draw, so you're going to end up with this guy. Let me just... But notice, notice what happens here. We actually end up with a disulfide linkage. Hold on. We end up with a disulfide linkage between two glutathions, right? A disulfide linkage between two glutathions. As you can see, some of these structures get kind of hairy. see what I have here. Let's see got glutamate. Let's see what am I doing wrong? Um come in. Oh I see. Sorry about that. Even I make mistakes sometimes. All right, so, so it, essentially what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to take two monomers, which are the reduced forms of glutathione, and it's going to oxidize them into a dimer of glutathiones. And, of course, the dimer, as you can see here, is joined by a disulfide linkage. A disulfide linkage, and the enzyme that catalyzes it is glutathione peroxidase. And essentially what happens is you so so in other words if if glutathione is being oxidized then that means hydrogen peroxide has to be getting reduced and so what you end up with is two waters glutathione peroxidase ends up generating water okay now what i want to do is is actually let me let me copy and paste this over here cuz i'm actually going to use this again let me copy and paste and let me actually move over. I want to have plenty of room. Okay, so actually let me do this. Fill. Okay, so I have this, right? Now in this form it can't accept or, or it can't it can't oxid well it this can be reduced but it, it, it can't be oxidized any further, okay? It can't be oxidized any further, so therefore nothing else can be reduced by it, right? So you have to get this back in a form that, 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 that is in the reduced form, right? So it turns out that there's an enzyme, and this enzyme, go back to my brush, this enzyme is called nicotinamide nucleotide trans hydrogenase this is a very special enzyme in fact I'm gonna let me do this let me box it so here's my enzyme nicotinamide nucleotide trans hydrogenase and we, we're always under the assumption that all the NADHs that get put into the respiratory chain go into NADH dehydrogenase but it turns out that some of them actually get turned into NADPH so let's say I have some NADH that comes in, right? Well, you know, floating around free in solution, there's going to be some NADP+, right? Well, essentially what this enzyme does is it basically, and this is going to come into, it's going to produce, number one, NAD+. Or NAD plus. So in other words, the hydride and the proton of NADH are going to go on to NADP. 
So what you end up generating also is you generate a molecule of NADPH. Now this is not the, the main source of NADPH, that's the pentose phosphate pathway, but it is a, a, a rather significant source. And in fact, the NADPH that's produced here ultimately is what's gonna reduce glutathione back to the two monomers, right? So I've got some NADPH, right? And then there's an enzyme, there's an enzyme called called do it down here glutathione reductase and glutathione reductase is going to use this NADPH that's produced by nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase of course you're going to get out NADP plus and scroll actually I'm scrolling all the way so I'll just abbreviate it you end up with glutathione and in fact, it's the two monomers of glutathione. And actually, it's worth mentioning. I don't know if I already mentioned this, but glutathione is actually a trimer that's not synthesized by a ribosome. It's a, it's a tripeptide, but it's not synthesized by a ribosome. Some small peptides um, are actually not synthesized by ribosomes. They're synthesized by normal enzymes. In fact, this is synthesized by um, a glutamate cystineal transferase. And then there's also a glutathione synthase. But anyways, we start with two, two monomers of, glu of reduced glutathione, and they get oxidized into a disulfide bond. So they get oxidized, and hydrogen peroxide gets reduced to water, right? But now we've got this, we've got this dimer, this oxidized version of glutathione that we have to regenerate the reduced glutathione. So we generated NADPH by nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase, and the NADPH that was produced went and reduced glutathione back to two monomers of reduced glutathione, and that was catalyzed by glutathione reductase. So what ends up happening is a lot of times you do generate these reactive intermediates, and that's what this is. That's what this superoxide is it's a reactive intermediate and cytochrome c oxidase is remember remember cytochrome c is delivering electrons one at a time so it doesn't just take four electrons all at once and, it, and it's happy no it, it accepts the electrons one at a time so after the first reduction you're going to have a superoxide and that that's and sometimes once in a while the enzyme fails to hold on to the superoxide and the superoxide gets loose and if it, if you were to have let's say you weren't you didn't have this glutathione mechanism if you were to have all these superoxides floating around you would be covered in free radicals your dna would be damaged proteins would be damaged all sorts of really bad things so the purpose of all these enzymes superoxide dismutase glutathione peroxidase and nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase, glutathione reductase, all these enzymes together are protecting your body from the effects of free radicals. And in fact, there are other, there are other molecules, other antioxidants that you have in your body that can actually serve in, in, a, in a purpose similar to this. Ascorbic acid can, can, can scavenge for lone electrons. Uh, ascorbic acid can. Um, vitamin E can do the same thing. Um, so there are other molecules as well, but this is just an example, and specifically this um, goes along with the respiratory chain because the enzyme nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase is actually adjacent to complex one. It's actually very nearby complex one. So this is actually this enzyme right here. This enzyme is actually in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So I hope this video helped you understand a little bit about. Um, a little bit about what happens um, in cytochrome C oxidase and see you in the next video.